all right then uh, welcome back everyone uh, let's solve this question one and two let me read out the question for you you are given a sequence a1 a2 a n each element of a is one or two so we are basically given an array and every element can be like particular element is either one or two fine find out find out if an integer k exists so that the following conditions are met and what are these conditions uh, so k goes from one to n minus one so it seems like it is an index from the first element to the second last element 1 to n minus 1 and even into a2 so on till ak equals to ak plus 1 into ak plus 2 so on an so basically if you have elements from uh, you okay we have to find out uh, integer k such that the product of all the elements from the first element to the kth element is equal to the product of all the elements from k plus 1 element to the last element right so it seems like we have to divide the array we have to find out whether there is a partition of an array existing such that uh, there are two non-empty partitions because k can go from 1 till n minus 1 only right so non-empty partitions such that uh, a1 till ak is equal to ak plus 1 till an right if there exists multiple k that satisfy the given condition print the smallest all right so this seems to be a very simple question frankly uh, the problem tag is implementation and i would say it's not an 800 rated question it's a more of like since like code forces doesn't have ratings less than 800 Otherwise, this would definitely would have been marked in like a 500 or 400 rated question. I'll tell you why. Like, if you have done coding, that you know this question is very simple. But anyway, let's come back to the question. The question is, you are just given an array, and we have to find out an index from 1 to n minus 1. So we are considering one based indexing from 1 to n minus 1. So that product of all the elements till that part till 1 to k is equal to k plus 1 to n. So this can be easily achieved using a prefix sum or uh, yeah, we don't want prefix sum. We want prefix product, right? So this can be easily performed if you know how to like we can just pre-compute all the products beforehand and for every k we can just check right so for every k we can just uh, check if the product till this part is equal to so like we can calculate maybe a prefix product and then a suffix product so for every k we can just check if the product of elements till this index is equal to is equal to product of all the elements from k plus 1 till the end so this can be done using a prefix product and a suffix product array but um, i'm gonna show you even a simpler approach in this video so yeah, if you don't know about prefix product and service product, please uh, Google about it. You'll get it. It's very easy approach. So that's one approach, a uh, simple approach that uh, you can just create prefix products and suffix products and uh, check for every value of k. And the smallest k that satisfies the given condition, you can just print it. Right? So the question is clear. I guess if you just read the question, it would, been, it would have been clear. So I'm not going to repeat the question again here. Fine. So the input is we have t test cases fine and uh, the array is given and array element can either be one or two for each test case. Uh, if there is no such k print minus one right so if k doesn't exist print minus one otherwise print the smallest possible k fine so one approach i already discussed prefix product suffix product you can use other approach uh, let's see let's see what we can do let's go to sublime so one and two right so what you can do is like uh, in the end uh, you'll have to try every possible index right you'll have to try every possible index what do you need actually what do you need uh, one observation that you have here is uh, ai ai can be either one or two right so you actually care about the product but if i tell you that ai can be either one or two what does it mean one is anyway not gonna change the product the only thing that is changing your products is two right if one is there like no matter how many ones you take it's not gonna change the product so at a given index it is it only suffices to check how many twos are present till this index and what are the twos from k plus one till the last guy? So if I'm talking about the second index, it suffices to check if the number of twos till this index is equal to number of twos from k plus one to the end, right? That's what I'm saying, right? So at every possible value of k, it suffices to just check if number of twos in a1 so on till ak equal to equal to number of twos in ak plus one till an right why because one doesn't change the product right you know in the end you want to satisfy that equality a1 into so on till ak should be equal to ak plus one till an but if you have the elements only one and two one is not going to change the product so it just suffices to check if the number of twos if number of twos from a1 to ak equals to number of twos in ak plus one till an 
that's that so this again can be implemented using a prefix sum right to count the number of twos to count the number of twos from the left and for every value of k you can maybe count the number of uh, twos till this part and number of twos from k plus one to n so this can be done using a order of n square approach but i'm gonna show you a order of n approach right so what i'm saying is basically okay uh, if i went too fast so what i'm saying here is uh, for every possible value of k for k equals to one k less than equals to n k plus plus so i'm gonna try i'm gonna try to check every possible k and see whether the constraint is satisfied so what is the constraint basically what is the condition uh, the condition is here a1 till ak equals to ak plus 1 uh, even till product of a1 till ak equals to ak plus 1 to ak plus 2 okay. and so basically i'm going to go through every possible value of k and check whether this uh, condition is satisfied and for the first value for the smallest value of k that this condition is first satisfied i'm going to break basically right so yeah so and again i have taken an array as one base indexing so that's why i can just go from first index to the last index Right, so what I can do is uh, you can maybe find out the uh, number of twos, number of twos in this part, a1 till ak, and then maybe you can calculate number of twos, number of twos in kk plus one till an. So maybe you can just run two loops from one to k, and then k plus one to n, and find out the number of twos, and then check, and then check if uh, let's say I'm just call it left count. If this left count is equals to right count, left count is equal to right count. What you can do is uh, you can just break out of the loop right you can just break out of the loop and you can print this key right you can print this key you can break out of the loop and uh, maybe update a variable to be maybe found equals to two and in the end you can say not found not found you can just print minus one right right so this is what you can do so you can go through every possible value of k from 1 to n minus 1 so this has to be n minus 1 right so k less than n right so you have to go every possible value of k find number of twos from a1 to ak find number of twos from ak plus 1 to an and check so i'm just saying you can get the left count here you can store it in left count and this you can store it in right count so two loops can be run here uh, that is very simple you can do it for yourself and then just compare if left count is equals to right count if left count is equals to right count then just print that key because even the smallest value right make this boolean found true and then break why this boolean found true because if you ran if you went through every value of k and this found was never made uh, so initially maybe you can just made found equals to false if this found was never made true that means uh, a key was not found and anyway you can print minus one and your job is done now i want to optimize these two things like if you are a beginner uh, usually you will struggle in optimizing these two loops so that's what i want to focus on okay so initially uh, let's see there's also one more video in, on my channel, a very old video where I've discussed this technique. Uh, anyway, uh, but let's focus in this video. So what you can do is uh, initially, what should be the right count? Let's say before starting this procedure, what should be the right count? Uh, it should be total number of twos, right? So it should be total number of twos. So what I'll do is I'll just find out total number of twos. I'll just find a total number of twos and store it in this right count. So you can just use this uh, count in STL. Okay, you can just use this count. So what this count does is, uh, it goes through the entire array and goes through the entire array and finds the occurrences of this two and updates this r count right so that's what this count stl does you can also run a for loop and count but i'm just lazy here <laughs> okay fine so what you can do is at the start of every iteration you can check one thing if array of k is equals to two what does it mean the number of number of twos number of twos yeah i have to initialize l count also right L count. L count is basically number of uh, twos in a1 to ak so l count initially is zero right before starting the loop anyway l count is zero and right count is sum of all this. so basically i am talking about k equals to zero right now so we know i know k cannot be zero but if k is zero then right count basically number of twos number of twos from first till last index is anyway equal to total number of twos and left count is zero so if ak equals to two area of k equals to two what you can do is you can increment the left count but you will have to decrement the right count right so why does this make sense so let's say i came here at k equals to one left count will be one left count will be one and what will be right count it will be it will be total minus initially you have taken total right to initially taken four four minus one right four minus one if you came at this point then left count would be two and uh, right count would be four minus two four minus two right so initially you subtracted one before so so on so basically what this does is at the start of every iteration and for every value of k if I found out that uh, array of k equals to 2, I can increment the left count and I can decrement the right count. So this is a very standard way of doing things. So what I'm effectively doing is 
I am not using uh, the prefix sum arrays or for loop. I'm just maintaining the two variables and calculating what is the uh, what is the count of uh, two from a1 to ak and what is the count of two from ak plus one till a n uh, a n. That's what uh, this this part does here. And the idea is simple basically. Initially, initially in the right partition, the number of two is equal to total. When I come here, I found out that array of k was equals to two. So I can increment the left count and decrement the right count. Fine. If I come here, I can increment the left count. I can decrement the right count. If I come here, nothing needs to be done. The left count and right count are still same. But anyway, I'll break here only, right? So when L count and right count is equal, I'll break. So let me just quickly run it and see if it works. Okay, two minus one, one should be printed. Uh, but maybe if I just remove it and check it once again. Yeah, two minus one, one. So idea is simple. Let me summarize the question. We know that AI can be either one or two. So to satisfy the condition a1, a2, ak equals to ak plus 1 an, what, what I did is I went through all the possible values of k from 1 to n minus 1 and I checked whether number of 2s in a1 to ak is it equal to number of 2s from ak plus 1 to an. That's what I basically did. And how did I do it? Instead of running two for loops and making the complexity order of n square, uh, I just maintained two variables and I updated them. I updated them as and when 2 occurred. How did I update it? Because initially, the number of twos in the right sub array, right sub array will be equal to total and initially left sub array will be zero. As and when I encounter a two, I'm going to increment the left count and as and when I encounter, increment the left count and decrement the right count. That's what I do. So this is how uh, my left count and right count is maintained instead of using extra space. So that's that. Uh, I guess I don't have anything much to discuss. I'll just quickly submit it. If you're following the playlist till now, I don't think that this would be very much difficult for you to understand. But if you have any doubts, uh, please let me know in the comments, of course. This should work. Uh, yeah, it works. So, all right. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.